Hey everybody, Mike here with EverythingAboutConcrete.com. In this video, I'm going to give you some tips on learning how to power trial a concrete slab. So right here, we got this 28 foot by 20 foot concrete slab. We set this up and poured it uh, all this morning, and now we're getting ready to finish it right now. So what Darren doing is, is he's starting up the power trial. Uh, this is about an hour and a half, about 90 minutes after we got done pouring, he's starting a power trial. And, you know, how you can tell it's time to get started is when you, you know, you, you step on it, you can press it with your fingers, you got to feel it somehow, you got to be able to touch the concrete, and when it gives you very little resistance to sinking in, that means it's about ready. So, Darren's stepping on this concrete, and he's only sinking in maybe a sixteenth of an inch. If he's sinking in a quarter of an inch to three-eighths of an inch, then that's just too soft. You've got to wait a little bit longer before you can get on it. Otherwise, you're really going to mess this thing up with a power trial. You're going to create a bunch of humps and a bunch of dips, and those are going to be hard to get out. So about a sixteenth of an inch is, is plenty uh, soft enough on a slab this size. And it's about 70, 75 degrees out right in the sun. And you can see that the surface of that concrete is working up nice and easy. He doesn't even have the power trial going that fast. So what he's doing is he's just going around and, and uh, budging, buzzing the edges first. Making sure his edges are all nice and flat. You can see we got some anchor bolts sticking up on this slab. So he's making sure he doesn't hit those anchor bolts. There's one right there. But he can ride that, the, because the 2x12 form is right the same level as the slab, he can ride those blades out over the form just a little bit where there isn't an anchor bolt, and that helps keep those edges nice and flat. If you stay away from the edges, you know, 5 or 6 inches every single time you hit it, then you're going to create a little hump there. And it's really nice to have a good flat slab. So... What we do, this first pass, when we start power trial, we call this the float. And the reason we call it float is because we have these special blades that we put on over the top of the finished blades on the power trial, and they're called float blades. So they slide right down over them. They're a little bit bigger blade, so it kind of floats over the surface. And the reason we use these float blades is because... It's it's just easier to get out, you know, the bull float marks. You can see some bull float marks there. You look in the center of the slab, see those lines? Those are just left from the bull float. I mean, they're no big deal. But if you let them get too hard, they're going to be hard to get out with even the power trial. So um, these float blades, they just get those lines out nice and easy. They, they help smooth out any little tiny humps or dips or fill in any little voids or rock holes if that was left by the bull float and it's just faster for us to put those float blades on and hit the slab the first time with these blades than it is to use what's called a combo blade. A combo blade are what a lot of power trials are, come with when they when you buy them brand new so and all that means is you can use them for both this first pass and then the finish passes. Sometimes it just makes it a little easier for someone who's new or just starting out just to use the combo blade. But it's not really that big a deal to use these float blades either. So we'll hit the floor. And you can see there's a, a specific pattern we use when we power trial. You can see Darren, he's going kind of north to south with this pattern to start with. <clears throat> so he's, he's going right with the power trial. In order for this power trial to go to the right, you got to push down on the handles a little bit. And then for it to come to the left, like this, you lift up on the handles a little bit. And whatever you do, you can't let go of those handles. If you let go of those handles, that thing's going to start spinning around kind of kind of crazy and you could get hurt. So you push down to go right, and you lift up just a little bit to go left. You, you see he's using his body, his leverage there just a little bit. So you can see when he comes left, we call that the finish pass. Now he's pulling that down, putting the top of the power trial right at the bottom of that finish pass. 
and he's going back to the right, and then he'll come up halfway and go right down the middle of those two passes. And he pulls it back down, goes to the bottom of that finish pass, goes all the way over to the right, up a little bit, and right down the middle of those passes. So that's how we, that's our technique for every time we hit the floor. So he's going north and south this time, and then after he gets done floating, we call this floating the floor this first time, he'll shut the power trowel off, and he'll probably let it sit for 20 or 30 minutes and let it dry up a little bit more. Then he will kick those float blades off, and then we'll hit it with the finish blades that are the finish blades that bolt the right to the power trowel. You can see he's going to kind of work his way back to the truck. He's so you can see way over there on the left, we've got that little crane that's hooked to the back of the truck. So he'll hook that power trowel back up to the crane. He'll lift it up. And he'll just pull those float blades off and he'll set the power trowel right back down on. So that's the first pass. That's That was about 90 minutes after we got done pouring it. It was ready to float and we got it all floated. And you can kind of see the pattern right there with the power try if you look at the slab you can see the pattern after he gets done floating it those, the guys go around and they trial all their edges get all the edges nice and smooth fill in any little holes any voids You're getting around all the anchor bolts make sure the edges are really nice and flat there's one garage door right there in the front where Darren is right now and he's trialing that garage door to getting that all nice and smooth that's a nine foot door right in the center of that slab. We usually taper that doorway down a little bit too. I've got some other videos showing that how we taper those doorways down. And then usually once Darren trowels it like this, he'll run a just a really light broom finish just on that part that's tapered. And then we'll run an edger on the front edge to, to round the edge and that doorway will be done. So all in all that probably took Darren about you know five minutes or so to, to float that slab the first time. It you know watching watching Darren power trial he makes it look really easy because he's been doing it a long long time. It's really not as easy as what he makes it look. I mean it, there is a learning curve to it. But watching these videos, I've got a couple other videos out on power trialing now. Um, it's just going to help you learn about the timing. So here we are, probably I don't know. I think he was about 20 25 minutes after he floated it. Now he's got the finish blades on. So he's going to go around, let's see which way he starts here. He's going to go east to west this time. So he's crossing his pattern from the first time. So he's going to the left, slightly picking up on the handles, moves that thing to the left. And he drops that down a little bit, pushes it back to the right, and then he's going to come up and go right down in between those two passes right there. And once you get used to running one of these things, once you've run one a while, I mean, they are pretty easy to run. It's kind of like you can really run one with one hand and control it. You just got to know the balance, you know, of the machine, how much you got to push down on the handle, how much you got to lift up on it to control it. But it pretty much glides right over the surface of the concrete. And what he's looking for, you know, when he's running that power trial, he's watching where the blades those four blades on the power trial are hitting the concrete and making sure they're filling in all the little voids left by the, 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 the pass he just did, the float pass. So those finish blades are filling in all the little voids and smoothing out the concrete even more. And that's what he's looking for as he's running the power trial right here. So again, it's about 75 degrees out, it's sunny, so this thing's drying, it's drying pretty fast. 
So there's not going to be much downtime once you get started on this thing. If you do get on it too late, you know, it's it's going to be hard to really get a nice smooth finish on this thing. It's not going to look very good. So if, uh, if you're just starting out, you know, I would err on the side of maybe getting on it a little earlier than late. How you can tell, you know, the second time you hit this, if you step on it, and your your foot, your sneaker, your boot, whatever you're wearing, leaves a really wet mark in the concrete, then it's a little too early. If your boot print, your footprint, kind of leaves, uh, it's kind of dry under it, but maybe a few spots of the footprint are a little wet, then that's that's about the right time to hit it. You can see he's going east to west on this time, so he's crossing the pattern, which helps smooth out the slab, level it out even more. If you go the same way, if he went north-south every single time he hit this thing, it would create these little waves in the concrete. And I mean, they wouldn't be super noticeable by eye, but if you, if you put a level across it or a string across it, you'd notice all the little high points and low points but by crossing the pattern like this it levels out all those little uh, waves every time you hit it so by the time you're done it's nice and flat and level you can see Luke's going around and hitting the edges each time making sure the edges are really nice and smooth so for a 28 by 20 slab like this I mean Again, it only takes Darren probably five minutes or so to actually power trial this thing. I'm using the old girl here to power trial too. I've had that power trial probably, well, I don't know, 20 years I bet. I put a, a new motor on it. That That's an eight horsepower motor on it. I mean, it's not new now, but that's the second motor for that thing. That thing still runs really good. We do have a brand new four foot Marshalltown uh, power trial in the truck too. You can't see it in the truck right now, but that's in the truck. And that thing runs really nice. That We just got that this year. I would highly recommend, you know, if you guys need a power trial, um, I got a link down in the description to Marshalltown's website. And you can go there, click through to their website. You can buy any of their tools from their website that we use. And if you do, they you know they gave me a discount code. You just gotta use the letters E A C in the discount code when you check out on Marshalltown's website, and they'll give you 10% off anything you buy. Plus, they ship it to your house free too. That's what I did. They they shipped that four foot power trowel right to my house. And all I really had to do was I had to put the handles on it and hook up the throttle cable and it was ready to go. That little saw, that little thing you see in front too, that's a soft cut saw. It's actually, Husqvarna bought them out so it's actually a Husqvarna saw now. But that's the 150 and that's what we use to saw expansion joints or control joints in the slabs after we get done power troweling. I don't think I took a video of that on this one but I've got some other videos of us sawing. That's definitely, I think that saw is down in the description too. I mean, if you're in this kind of business or if you're thinking about getting in this business, that's definitely the saw to have right there to saw your slabs. I mean, one person can pick it up. It's that light. It's fast. It cuts easy. You can get on it the same day. You don't have to go back the next day to saw. Um, those saws are well worth the money. So as you can see, Darren's just getting done with the second hit. And he's going to get off it for a little while. Now he's starting the third pass with the finish. He's going to hit it with the finish blades again. So he probably got off it for about 20 or 30 minutes and let it dry up a little bit. Now he's getting right back on it. And he's going to start piling, trialing this thing. He's going north to south again, crossing his pattern. You can see Luke's over there. He's already the thing. The slab's getting so hard. He's already starting to strip it, putting the taking the stakes out. By the time these guys get done here today, they'll have all the boards off, 
and everything all loaded on the trailer and headed out. So, I mean, a lot of, we do these jobs every day, so it's hard to leave the forms on and then come back, especially if we're an hour or two hours away from, you know, home. You can see how that power trowel is just gliding over the surface. He's got both hands on it, got good control over it. Kind of using it up against his body as a little bit of leverage. That power trial naturally, I mean, when you start it, the handles naturally want to spin counterclockwise. So you really got to have a good grip on it when you start it. And make sure, you know, if, if, uh, if the throttle's up at all, those blades are just going to start spinning as soon as it starts. So you, you want to have good, a good grip on it when you pull it over. And then use your body like Darren does to help move it back and forth. Don't just use your arms. Your arms are going to get really tired. You see Luke's got all the stakes out. And pretty soon he'll get ready to start pulling those boards off. How many of you guys have ever run a power trial before? Let me know down in the comments. You know, how, And how many times have... Have you run one once, twice? Do you do you run one all the time at work, or are you thinking about doing your own slab and, and you're trying to figure out how to power trial? You know, let me know down in the comments. And if this video's helping you guys at all, if it's if it's adding any value to you, you know, go ahead down there and smash the like button. And for you guys that don't know me, you know, my name's Mike Day. I own Day's Concrete Floors. Um, this is my YouTube channel where I put out a couple videos a week all about different kinds of concrete stuff. A lot of flat work, you know, a lot of slabs, a lot of floors, a lot of decoratives, you know, stamp concrete, um, concrete repair, I repair cracks and floors, cracks and walls. We do a lot of epoxy floors. So, I mean, if you like that kind of stuff, go ahead down there and hit subscribe. And hit the little bell notification so, you know, YouTube will let you know when I put out a new video. If I also have, you know, down in the description, guys, I also have a course on concrete slabs where I broke down all the steps from start to finish, from from laying out the forms to how to put them together, how to square, how to pin it, how to set it to grade, how to pour the slab, and then how to finish it, just like this. So if you're if you're thinking of doing your own slab, there's a course down there that will teach you everything you need to know, so you don't skip anything. Um, you only got one chance to do this right with concrete. If you don't do it right the first time, then you're going to create a mess. An expensive mess, too. You can see Darren's just going on at his own pace. He's going as fast as he needs to go, but not too fast. Making sure all the little holes are filled. Making the making the slab come out nice and smooth. Unless someone tells us to leave the slab a little fuzzy or or rough, we we usually finish them really smooth. That way they're easy to clean, easy to sweep, easy to seal. And he's almost done this third pass. This is the third time he's hit it with a power trowel. He's just working his way back to the front of the slab, taking out his footprints. He's hitting that right hand edge. And he'll shut it off and leave it right there until the next hit. The only place I really don't like to shut a power trowel off is right in front of a door. You know, whether it's a garage door or a three foot door. Because sometimes, sometimes when you go to start it up, those blades will stick to the surface a little bit. And they'll pull out a little bit of chunk of concrete. So, you know, whenever you go to start the power trial, you're going to want to slide the blades just a little bit before you start it. And make sure they're not sticking to the concrete. 
if they do then you gotta really fill in those those chunks that you pull out all right so this is the fourth hit now the fourth time he's hitting it with a power trial he hit it with float blades the first pass and this is the third time with a finished blade Luke's got the boards all stripped off you can see how fast that how hard that concrete gets really fast you really got to know what you're doing Again, he's going east-west, even though the slab is really hard at this time. He's still crossing his pattern, even on this hit. So again, between that third hit and this hit here, uh, Darren waited about 20, 25 minutes. Let the sun dry the surface up a little bit more. And I don't know if you can tell, but I can tell. You know where he's hitting it now it's starting to turn what we call a little bit black a little bit burnt um, so it's kind of we call that shining out which means that's probably the last time he's gonna hit it it's nice it's about as smooth as glass when it starts looking like that so there's no real reason to hit it again after that at that point If there's any little tiny ratty spots or little tiny rock holes, he's filling them in this last time. If the power trial doesn't fill those spots in, then, you know, usually my guys will take their hand trial. They'll either stop the trial and shut it off and fill the little spot in with their hand trial, or they'll just, they'll just balance the power trial while it's running with one hand and reach down and fill the hole with the hand trial with the other hand. You can see how easy he makes that look. I know it's, it is easy to him. It's easy to us because we do it every day, but, but it's really not that easy if you're just learning again. I, I wouldn't think you'd want to start on a slab any bigger than this. This one's 28 by 20. If this was your first time power trialing. Maybe even smaller would be better. So I don't know if you can tell, but I can tell it's kind of learnt, turning a little black where he's hitting it, blackish, burntish. Well, this is gonna, this is going to end up being the last hit on it, and, this, and the slab's going to be done. So, you know, we started forming this thing at six in the morning. Concrete showed up at seven in the morning, and that's those are the other parts of this three-part series. Part one was us forming it and setting it up. Part two was us pouring the slab, and this is part three. So concrete showed up at seven. We got done pouring this thing about, you know, it didn't take that long, 7.45, something like that. Probably got all the tools all washed out and everything by eight. And then by about 9.15, 9.30 or so, Darren was starting a power trial. And then, uh, you know, an hour and a half or so later, 11 o'clock, 11.15, 11.30, they're all done power trialing. So from start to finish, you know, it doesn't take very long to do a slab like this. Oh, well, he's just about done. He's getting down to the front of the slab. He'll just work his way back, then he'll lift that trowel off with the crane, and then them guys are going to lay out the saw joints. I get asked a lot about saw joints, about why, you know, why do we cut joints in a slab like this or in any concrete, you know, the stamp concrete we do or anything, sidewalks. Those are help to help control any cracking of the concrete. 
when concrete dries like this it shrinks and when it shrinks you know that creates stress on the concrete so under that stress you know sometimes the concrete will crack so if we saw cut a nice straight line and it down about an inch to an inch and a half that's going to create a nice stress relief point and it'll crack right in that saw joint so at least it looks nice and straight and neat and doesn't just crack wherever it wants to you know on a slab like this we're going to cut two two joints probably on each side of that garage door north to south and then one joint down the middle east to west and again I don't think I got video of that but I do have other videos with us sawing in it if you want to check those out most people say there's two kinds of concrete concrete that hasn't cracked yet and concrete that has already cracked so it's important to control try to control those cracks whenever you can there he's almost done with that he's gonna lift that off and get it out of the way and that's gonna be it for this all power trialed so I mean I hope that helped you guys a little bit learn about how to power trial a concrete slab when to get on it you know the technique used how many times you might need to hit a slab before it gets done how often to hit it in between you know it all varies depending on the weather sometimes so you know watching I got a, a couple other videos about this and in my course I teach you how to do this too so the more exposure to get to it the better you'll, you'll be so right now Luke's laying out for those saw joints like I told you but that's it guys that's how to power trial a concrete slab so I mean thanks for watching I'll see you on the next one